Since we opened our shop, this is one of the most requested dry flies, except for it's not really available anywhere. So we found the guy that designed it, asked him some questions, and now we're gonna show you how to tie it. Super simple, but it should be in your box. Okay, this fly has become a legend on our local rivers. Um, and it's actually relatively simple. Um, the, the technique to tie this fly is actually even in the Benchside Reference, which is a fly tying book that's been around for over 20 years. But anyway, um, the joke on the river is if uh, the, the gentleman who designed this, his name is Phil Bear. And if, uh, if he fished the hole before you, you might as well just get in your car and go somewhere else because this fly is so effective. Now, I had heard so much about it that uh, I decided to, to try some one, one day. That was beta season last year. And lo and behold, I have a whole box of them now because it, it became my best beta fly ever. So it's a super basic fly and I'll show it to you as soon as you like and subscribe. Do it right now. Look, I'll look you right in the eye. Do it right now. Okay, we had to get mean, Brigham. Did they do it? Probably. Probably, okay, we'll take that. All right, so just choose your favorite dry fly hook. This is a straight eye, I think this is a TMCO 101, but doesn't really have to be any specific hook. Um, I also do like TMCO 226BL for this one. It's a little bit of a curved shank hook that works really well. But at the end of the day, just choose your favorite hook. Um, and then the thread is just whatever color you want this fly to be. Um, I'm just going to do it in black because that's what I have. And uh, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and back. This fly does not have a tail at all. It can be fished as a midge, it can be fished as a blue winged olive, it can be fished as a PMD, and I've even tied some big enough to fish as a drake. And I think the, the main characteristic of this fly that's really good is that it floats the wing perfectly upright. And I think part of that is because there's no tail to impede how this fly sits in the water. Uh, for whatever reason, the fish don't even care whether or not it has a tail. Another thing that you kind of have to wrap your head around is this is a size 18, but I'm going to put size 14 hackle on it. But you definitely want to go upsized. Maybe this is a little bit much. This is just how I like them. Um, but you, you might just go to a 16. Um, but I'm doing a 14 on this one. I'll just get that tied in. And now I'll take that hackle and I'm going to wrap it forward. The hackle can go any which direction. You don't have to keep it clean at all. Four or five turns of hackle, cut it off. All right, now here comes the part where I've got to be kind of all fingers. Um, I'm going to take this hackle, I'm going to come from underneath, and I'm going to preen all those hackle fibers up. I'm going to take my thread behind it to make like a little figure eight. So the goal is that all these hackle fibers are sitting right on top of the hook shank. So hackle fibers are up. Sorry, I, I have to be all fingers here. Let me get a crisscross under this and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so as you can see, I've figurated my thread underneath the hackle. It's pushed all the, those fibers up and if you have to uh, do a few more turns of hackle, you can kind of tease the hackle to, to be exactly how you want it. That's about how I like them. I'll just come up here, create a little bit of a head, and then whip finish. And some of those fibers just don't want to lay down or go where I want them, so nuke them. Okay, so final step is take a little bit of Zappa Gap and just put that right underneath those thread wraps. So that, that's it. It's so simple and it's super visible. It floats great. I've even fished little tiny droppers underneath this, but 
This is a fly that definitely needs some room in your fly box.